nursing shortage. We're short of about 50,000 nurses in the NHS. It's all about patient care. We have the duty of care to look after our patients, but we're not able to deliver because of the shortage. I was on nurses picket lines in 88. I've been on my own picket line as a nurse in, in 93 and 92. But the difference today is that the RCN, the union that used to be a no-strike union, is now taking strike action. And I've got to say, as an NHS worker in terms of nursing, it's a massive game changer. It changes everything. We are striking not just for our wages, but also for patient safety. We're striking for our NHS. We are striking for the future of our NHS, for our parents, our grandparents, ourselves and our children. What do we want? need fair pay throughout the NHS but it is about how the NHS is effectively being run down to the ground by the Tories underfunding for the last 12 years. We need to fight for the NHS and um, we're going to lose it otherwise. As we know it we are going to lose it if we don't fight. Nurses have lost a third of their pay since 2010 and it's leaving nurses completely overstretched in hospitals and in the community. A lot of people are leaving the profession because of the pay and um, the pay is not encouraging people to come in. We've been struggling for many, many years now and things have only got worse during the pandemic and things are continuing to get worse. In London alone there's over 11,000 nurse vacancies. They're leaving their careers entirely to work in Saudi Arabia and Dubai where there are better benefits or they're working still in the UK but in the private sector. You've got places like Germany, France, in the EU who's doing better than us. Why are they getting more than we are getting? Are they doing more than we're doing? Only yesterday I had another two nurses hand in their resignation and, and that's what we're being faced with every single day. We can't recruit and we can't retain. Due to the Tory party removing the bursary, which was the old way of funding nursing students, nursing students now have to pay for their degrees which, um, yes, lots of people have to pay their degrees, but nurses have to work full-time on the wards for eight, 12 weeks at a time. So they're not able to um, have supplementary income like many students. They can't go and work in a bar, they can't go and work in a restaurant. So due to that, we have lost thousands of nursing recruits over the years. I work in the community. I drive to my patient's home, from the office to patient's home. I pay for my pet £70 pounds a week. They only pay me about 40p per mile, which is not enough to cover my car maintenance. But I still do it because of the love and heart I have for my patient. HCAs that are on lower bands, they are on a lot less money than us, and they are doing a bloody fantastic job on the wards. There are eyes and ears a lot of the time. They're doing the kind of basic nursing care, whereas the nurses are doing the more complex care, such as the IV medication. So these guys deserve a pay rise as much as we do. It's difficult to live on the pay that we get now. We have to do like extra shift and this has an impact on our children and our family as a whole. We're supposed to do 37 and a half, but you end up doing, some even go up to 70 hours a week. People don't leave their shift on time at the end of the day because the, the amount of work that they want to do isn't done and there's still things that need to be to be done for the patients on that day so nurses feel like they can't leave. You're constantly on your days off getting WhatsApp messages, anyone free to work tonight, we're desperate, anyone can work and that puts you, like that puts you on edge anyway on a day off, it's not nice knowing your colleagues are having a really awful day. The body feels tired all the time. There's no rejuvenating it. We've got high sickness numbers with people going off on stress, um, long-term sickness. And then you come on the work and you're less, less staffed as well because somebody didn't turn up or they, there's no, that vacancy hasn't been filled up.
being understaffed on the wards in hospitals but also in the community. It's leaving patients in pain on the trolleys. It's leaving patients without treatment and that is not a fault of our own. And we need to remember that because we go home at the end of the day exhausted but also we can't ever seem to switch off mentally and we are so drained from the day that we feel like it's our fault. It's not our fault. It's, it's the government's fault. In the ambulance service, we see every day the harm that is coming to our patients because of the delays and because of the lack of health care and because of the lack of funding. Once I received a call around 11 p.m. from a mother of a seven-month-old child who had been waiting for a clinician's call back since 8 a.m. in the morning. So she had been waiting for more than 12 hours to receive a call back and when her symptoms, when his symptoms got worsened, we had to send out an ambulance, we had to request an ambulance. So we stand with you 100%. It's nurses this week, next week, up and down the country, thousands of ambulance workers will also be on strike. We're relying a lot on overseas nurses. During COVID, a lot of them moved home to be close to their families. So we've lost a lot of our overseas nurses. And also, people have been burnt out. People have been uh, like experiencing unimaginable um, things in their jobs. I've been one of those where I've been quite traumatised from the pandemic. I actually resigned and I only do bank nursing. Um, and that's because it's better for my mental health. I actually earn the same amount, if not sometimes a bit less, depending on the shift of the month. But some nurses don't want to work in the profession because they've not gotten the help that they needed after the pandemic. And they're so traumatised that they are suffering with PTSD. We've had enough of the government fleecing millions and millions and millionaires and billionaires have made an absolute stack of money out of the pandemic. Make no mistake about it, this Tory government won they're not serious about resolving this dispute and the plan is to try and demoralise you, to try to drive you out of the NHS and try to privatise the lot. Private hospitals are now advertising that their patients should come off the waiting lists and go over to the private sector and that's the direction of travel of healthcare in this country. If people tell you strikes don't win, that's not true because the Liverpool dockers in Unite went out on all out strike and they have won a pay rise of 14 to 18 percent. In Unite, over the last year, we have won over 450 disputes that we have led. We have put 200 million extra in earnings into the pockets of our members. If we can do that there, then we can do that here as well. Today, Liverpool dockers are on the picket lines with the nurses and it is united action and solidarity that can stop this government. I want to bring greetings from 115,000 postal workers who are on strike today. We want to stand side by side with every single one of you. They're holding you guys to ransom because they don't want the rest of the working class that are out on dispute getting a pay rise. I'm a Labour MP. The duty of every Labour MP is to be on a picket line today in solidarity with this strike. We're standing outside St Thomas's Hospital. Time and time again, this hospital has saved the lives of MPs when they've got sick across in their offices. So it's time, it's time to remind them. We've supported them, they've had the health care. We demand support from them. I think the fight over the NHS is the fight for the future of our country. We need to organise, we need to develop the strikes, we need to build the strikes, we need to link up with other hospitals, link up with other groups of workers like railway workers. Do you know what? Yeah, bring on a general strike, absolutely. We need to show those people across the river that we've had enough, that we aren't going to tolerate poverty pay, we're not going to see a compromise in the service that we deliver the patients, we've had enough and we're going to fight and strike until we get a pay rise that can save the NHS.